Welcome back to Prime. Former Brooklyn Center, Minnesota police officer Kim Potter, who faces manslaughter charges for fatally shooting 20-year-old Dante Wright, gave highly anticipated testimony today in her own trial. The 26-year veteran broke down a couple of times as she spoke about that fatal April traffic stop. Here's Potter describing the exact moment she shot and killed Dante Wright. Take a look. He had a look of fear on his face. It's nothing I'd seen before. We were struggling. We were trying to keep him from driving away. It just, it just went chaotic. Remember yelling, taser, 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 and nothing happened. And then he told me I shot him. And here's the prosecution laying out how non-threatening Dante Wright seemed to Potter that day. Watch this portion. You never saw a weapon uh, on Mr. Wright, did you? No. Never saw a gun? No. He never threw a punch, right? No. Never kicked anyone? No. Never said, I'm going to kill you? No. Never said, I'm going to shoot you? No. Never said, there's a gun in the car and I'm coming after you? No. Okay. Potter has pleaded not guilty to all charges, and closing arguments begin on Monday. Joining me now for trial analysis is the chairwoman of the Rainbow Push Coalition and former president of the National Bar Association, C.K. Hoffler. Good to see you tonight, C.K. All right, let me hear it. What do you think about Potter's testimony today? Do you think her crying will work in her favor in front of the jurors? Well, Laverne, you know, whenever a defendant takes a stand, it's always like playing Russian roulette. I think that her crying was pretty persuasive, and she cried when she was being put on the stand by her lawyer, of course, during her direct examination. She really didn't break down and cry during cross-examination. She was very, very composed during cross-examination. But I do think that her tears um, were real, and, and of course, they should have been real. She shot and killed a, a young man for no reason. She should have tased him, at best but not shot and killed him. So anyone would cry behind that. So I, 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 I don't read so much into the crying. I think that's a normal reaction. That was her reaction right after. But I do think it probably was persuasive with the jury. But there's some holes in her story that I think that she's going to have to contend with. And I think the cross-examination was pretty impactful insofar as it pointed out some of the holes. But of course, when you see a police officer take the stand and cry and express a sense of remorse, I think jurors are impacted by that. So they're gonna have to weigh the crying, the tears, and her sense of remorse was with whether or not she carried out her duty as a 26 year veteran on that day. And even though she didn't intend to kill Dante Wright, the argument can be made that she was careless and that she was reckless. And that is what this case is about. Yeah, and there's people, of course, who say that she was crying because she was in trouble herself. So she's crying because she's scared. And I mean, this goes also for the Kyle Rittenhouse trial uh, and also what we've seen in other trials where the person is on the stand and, and are those tears for themselves, uh, especially because when she also cried out, uh, after she shot him, oh my gosh, I'm going to prison. So it sounded like she was about, it was about her, which is what people have said. But we know she's a 26 year veteran of the force and despite being trained on tasers since 2002, she claims she confused her firearm with her taser that day. Now today the prosecution reminded jurors again about the difference in the weight of the two, obviously one he heavier than the other. So how effective do you think the prosecution has been on that point? I think on that point, the prosecution has actually been pretty persuasive. I don't think it's credible for, for Kim Potter to say, well, I, you know, I, I mistook. The no. One, the firearm was on one side. The taser was on another side. It was quite simple. She's training, ironically, a recruit. And she actually said if she had been by herself, she wouldn't have even stopped Dante Wright. So I don't think that she's credible on that issue. The question is going to be, is that is that lack of credibility enough to carry the day and for the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she should be convicted of first and second degree manslaughter? That's going to be the question. I think there are holes in her story, whether she saw, you know, Officer Johnson on the other side of the car. You know, I think there's some 
after the fact stories that have been made up a little bit here that are convenient. But the bottom line is whether or not the jury feels that she was simply reckless. And if because of her years of training, she should have known better, she should have done better, and she should not have made that fatal mistake. Because after all, we do hold police officers and those who can carry a firearm and are licensed to use it to a higher standard. They can't just be willy nilly and make these kind of mistakes. Because if they do, it does result in what happened to Dante Wright. He was killed and he never had a chance at life at that moment. And for that, I believe she should be held responsible. And so it's just going to be up to the jury to see if there's enough evidence to support that. And CK, the prosecution also noted today that Dante Wright, he never threatened the police. He never threw a punch. He never kicked. He didn't give any indication he had a gun. So how will jurors likely digest that info? You know, Laverne, I think that that is another weakness of the defense's case because this is reminiscent, kind of makes you think of Ahmaud Arbery. You know, they, the, the defense was saying how Ahmaud Arbery was so threatening, and they were trying to say, really, that Dante Wright caused his own fate. That's implicit in the arguments that they're making, that somehow he, by struggling, is the reason why he was shot and killed. And I think that that is a very risky position for them to take, and I don't think they have credibility on that issue. Dante was not being, um, and actually everyone's that testified about that that was there said he was not threatening at all. He was compliant. He was respectful. We can see that and we can hear that in the in the videotape. So I think that that is a weakness in the defense case, and I think this prosecution scored points on that very issue. So what do you expect to see on Monday in the closing arguments? I think in the closing arguments, the prosecution is going to come out and point out the inconsistencies and what, quite frankly, doesn't make sense. They're going to heighten, they're going to place a lot of information and heighten the, the intensity of her duty. 26 years, trained, she should have known better. The, the confidence we place in police, the fact that she had a, a, a license to kill, if you will, and how important it is for officers to understand the difference between a taser and a gun and how she should have known better and how it is inexcusable and she should be held accountable. That's what the prosecution is going to do. The defense, on the other hand, is going to say, look, she made a mistake. She's so sorry. It was an accident. You can tell she was filled with, with a lot of grief right there on the scene, and she didn't intend to kill him. But it's not a question of whether she intended to kill him. It's a question of whether she was reckless. And they're going to submit, just as her expert laid out, that she did everything right, that she was not reckless. She had a really good expert, I must say. And it's going to be, who do the jurors believe? Do they believe the prosecutor's expert? Do they believe the defense expert in terms of use of force? So that's going to be what we expect to see. We should expect a lot of passion on both sides. We should expect that the defense is going to bring home, we saw her, you witnessed her, she was crying at the scene, she was crying in the courtroom, she didn't mean it to happen, she wasn't reckless, she was following the rules, she just simply made a mistake. And you're going to see a lot of passion from the prosecution saying, absolutely not the case. This kind of mistake is not permissible if it was a mistake. It was carelessness and it was recklessness and we can ill afford for the police to do this because then they will continue to kill young men and young women or men and women who should not be killed under these circumstances. Yeah, we shall see and find out what the jury decides and how long it'll take them. C.K. Hoffler, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it.